Hello and welcome to Knitting Butterflies. My name is Emily. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new to the podcast, like I said, my name is Emily and there are lots of ways that you can connect with me. You can follow me on Instagram, which is where I'm most active as at butterflym4. There is a link down in the show notes for you um, in the down bar. You can also um, friend me on Ravelry as Emily Straw and I have a Facebook page, but I don't update it very often. So those are the two best ways to reach me is through Instagram and Ravelry. And you can always find any notes about projects that I have on knitting butterflies dot, or mini, knitting butterflies podcast.com. I promise you I can talk. So I try to keep pretty good show notes on there with lots of links and things like that for you. So how are you? It's been a crazy week for me. I wanted to take a minute and just say to any of you living in the paths of Hurricanes Harvey and Irma and now Jose is on its way that we are thinking of you and praying for you and um, anything that we can do to help. I've been trying to keep an eye on people that I know who were directly affected or know people who were directly affected by the storms and um, yeah, if you're, if you're kind of like me, like Things like this give me really bad anxiety um, about world events. The world events in the last couple years have started to give me really bad anxiety and um, just surrounding some of the beliefs that I have. If you would like to know about that, you are welcome to private message me. Um, I don't really go into that on the podcast here, but I do know that my faith has been a really big part of for me, kind of what helps me cope with a lot of this part of the situation as well as give me guidance for what actions I can do because thoughts and prayers are great. Um, I personally feel like prayer is designed to specifically help us find out where to go next and what is it that we can do um, in those kind of situations. And so that's been really good for me. Um, and honestly, it's been a really emotional week watching all this, which I feel bad saying that because it's not even happening to me. Um, but as a result, I've kind of been just knitting a lot <laughs> on top of reading things and trying to learn things and um, keeping up with, with what is going on with the storms and things like that. We have some friends that... Um, sold everything and took their two boys and they live on a boat in the Dominican Republic and we were just a nervous wreck like these are some of our best friends and so they were on a boat in the Dominican Republic when Hurricane Irma came through you can see my puppy he's kind of trying to make herself at home bless you she has allergies really bad she's just gonna lay down in the corner um so I was kind of a nervous wreck for the last week as they were prepping for the hurricane and then they um their bay they were in Luperon Bay and their bay lost power and wi-fi and so they couldn't update us thank goodness we were able to receive an update through a ham radio chain that we were able to get to them and then eventually they did get power and wi-fi and updated everybody that they were fine but um it's it's kind of one of those things when it was like there was nothing I could do what could I do and so there are a lot of really good resources out there um, donating to different organizations that that help with the actual relief and things like that or um, finding people who do know people that were affected and sending them gift cards to Lowe's or Home Depot or um, Chick-fil-A you know or things like that that can really help them get through that crazy time I think is important for us to do so um, yeah so that's, I've been doing a ridiculous amount of knitting this week as a result. And so I hope that you all get to enjoy now the different projects that I have been working on and getting to share it with you. And maybe today's podcast will bring a little bit of comfort to you throughout your day today if you're struggling with the same thing. So I might as well um, show you the projects that I've been working on. Because like I said, I've been doing so much knitting and spinning and all that good stuff. So we might as well get started. So I wanted to update you on my mesmeric cardigan. 
um, I have made a lot of progress on this sweater. So when we last talked, I was ready to pick up the front. So this is the front of my sweater. It's beautiful, right? Um, the saddle shoulders and then the front and then there's the steak band right there and then the back. I have a bit of a problem in that I did not read the pattern. And as a result, I am actually gonna have to rip out all of this right here because I kept wondering, well, could you like knit this, knit the front and the back in the round and then seek the armholes? The answer is no, because of how it's constructed. You're supposed to knit to right about here. I might have to read it again because even that doesn't make sense to me. This is a mess, you guys. You're supposed to knit to right about here and then you're supposed to do the same thing on this side and then you start doing like these you start working in the round with the sleeve cap right here. In other words, I made a giant mistake. I don't know how to fix it. Um, I'm going to have to rip back a ton and I'm really, really overwhelmed by it. And I, this keeps happening with the sweater is that I make a mistake and then I get really, really overwhelmed by it again and again and again. So on the one hand, what I could do is I could continue knitting to that same spot on the front because I haven't reached that spot on the front yet. So I could continue knitting to that spot on the front, put it on holders just like before, rip this out back up to this point, which is doable. It's definitely doable. And then start the sleeve cap and then, uh, and then it'll be around in the round and it will go so much faster. That's why I just keep telling myself, this is going to go so much faster when it's not fair. I'll knit flat. Like, Oh no. Um, but it's just really overwhelming. <laughs> it's going to match like so much of my wardrobe perfectly. <sighs> but I just, I realized that I think two nights ago and wanted to just throw it in the trash. Honestly, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep working on it, but I really wanted to finish this for Ryan back and I don't know how I'm going to do that. So we'll see how that goes. It's so beautiful. I, I do love it. Um, I Like I said, part of me still wishes I had done it in yellow instead of the turquoise. And so there's a part of me that's like, maybe I'll just like take the needles out and start over with doing it in yellow instead of turquoise. Because I have enough yarn for that. Um, but that's a lot of extra knitting. You know, it's not just ripping back this section and then picking up stitches and going. It would be knitting all of this again. And that's a lot of strain of knitting flat. So tell me what you think. Do you think I should just rip this out right here? Which is probably what I should do. That's what a sane person would do. I always don't have a ton of sanity when it comes to my knitting projects. So we will have to see what I do with that. But I'm really disappointed in myself that I didn't read the pattern. Part of it is that I didn't print the pattern and I should have printed it because the text on my phone is really tiny. And so I just kind of read it, but then didn't read it and was just trying to take it one step at a time. And it's not really an at the same time kind of situation, but it kind of is in how it's written. And so I should have paid attention to that. I also have a ton of ends that I've already woven in. Oh, and a ton more ends that I still have to weave in. This is a mess. This is, but look how beautiful the inside of it looks. I'm not trying to sound like a jerk, but I feel like I'm really good at stranded color work. I really enjoy it. It looks so pretty on the inside. I, I enjoy making sure, oh, this is, this was a mistake. Ooh, this is interesting, right? So I messed this up. This turquoise stitch was white originally and I fixed it, which is why my float is a little bit longer in here, but I even made a video for you guys about how I did that. Maybe we'll put that at the end, but I showed you how I fixed. If you're knitting stranded color work, a lot of the time it's only two colors um, and you go back and forth between the two colors a lot. And I made a quick video on what to do if you find that you accidentally mix those colors up because it's a really easy fix if you only have like one stitch to fix. Um, and it makes a little bit of a longer float, but this is Knit Picks palette and um, you can actually kind of felt the inside. Like if it's wet, you can kind of go like this a little bit and it makes all the floats just kind of stick together. 
and create a really nice fabric without really, like you don't want to felt it, felt it, but it will kind of suck it up all together. So it's such a beautiful sweater. And I have to rip all that color work out. Look at that. So we'll see. So tell me down below what you think I should do. Should I just do it in yellow? Should I not worry about it at all for Rhineback at all this year? Then I don't have a Rhineback sweater. I don't know. So tell me in the comments below what you think I should do with that. So there's that project. My The reason why I haven't gotten nearly as much done on that though as I probably should have to make it done in time is because of the What the Fade mystery knit along that is happening. Yeah, okay. So if you are knitting this and you don't want spoilers, I always feel like it's so cheesy when podcasters say that, but I've never done a mystery knit along. So if you are doing the What the Fade mystery knit along and don't want to see what it looks like, I'm going to put um, a timestamp right here for when you can skip ahead. So Emily, don't forget to put that timestamp. Okay, so I am working on clue two. Clue one zipped right through it, right? Um, I made a mistake. It is a brioche project. I made a mistake in that I forgot to do two of the left leaning increases in the brioche and then I forgot one of my center spine increases. So my stitch count was way off and I had forgotten it way down. And instead of trying to rip it out I um, and fix it, I just started over. Um, eventually I did rip it out completely so I could use that yarn. And then I did clue one. And so both times that I knit clue one, I did it in a day because it was so much fun. Clue two is taking a while. <laughs> it's a pretty involved project. Um, so this is my Wet the Fade shawl. And um, like I said, this is a brioche project. I have not done a big brioche project before. I've done a small one, I did a hat, but that was it. Um, and I really like brioche. This is a really good pattern to learn how to brioche. So Andrea includes in each clue, like the step-by-step -step instructions for how to do that step. Um, I have taken the Craftsy class by Nancy Marchant on Craftsy about brioche, but there's so many different kinds of brioche if you're doing it in the round or if you're doing it flat, if you're doing it with one color or two colors. And the setup is kind of intense for brioche. Um, and I feel like Andrea has made this like a super easy project so far to learn how to brioche with. Um, the setup is so easy to get going. That was the one thing I, when I did my brioche hat, I really hated the cast on cause it just, I didn't know what I was doing yet and I didn't do a swatch or anything and I thought it looked terrible. But Andrea's setup for this is really slick and it just looks super classy. And I love that she has an I-cord edge around the outside of it. Um, and then this is, so I have color A right here. Um, this is some Western Sky Knits and um, in the colorway Nightfall. And then this is One Twisted Tree in um, Rare Woman Claire. And then at the top is some Cascade Heritage Turquoise Sock Yarn that I had for color C, and then this is D. This is some Madeline Tosh. Um, it's a singles that I had, I don't know the name of it. And this is some O Loops yarn. That was from their Easter collection. And then at the very top, the fade on this is really fadey, which is awesome. You can't really tell where one starts and the other begin, and the other one ends. But at the top, I've started doing some of um, Lolo Did It that my friend Sarah gave me that is um, in the colorway 16 candles. So I actually have been documenting all of this project, um, choosing my color, like choosing my colors and arranging them, like how I arrange them and stuff. And you can see the full skeins. And then I plan on documenting like each step along the way. I did forget to record at the end of clue one, but I'm doing that. So by the end of it, I hope to have a whole like mini episode dedicated to just this product. So you can see it from start to finish. So, um, but yeah, it's brioche and I'm proud of myself. This is not something I would like probably choose to wear like style wise. I don't know, maybe I would, but it's such a big project and I'm still working on clue two. I have a feeling. So you knit, this is clue A. 
to right there and then this is clue B and then it actually goes down about this far and it's gonna be really big it's gonna be a big triangle by the time I'm done with clue two and I have a feeling that Andrea since we don't know clue three yet it's not really a spoiler to say what I think is gonna happen I think Andrea is gonna have us go off to the side and off to the side so it's gonna make like a triangle shawl with big wings that's what I think it's gonna be so we'll have to see um but it's nice I do enjoy working on it um I have learned how to fix brioche really well while working on this so far I got really good at tinking back because that darn left increase keeps catching me over and over and over again so I got really good at tinking back to where that is um, and I actually tink back with two colors instead of one which is a lot faster um and it seems to be working for me so so far so I often notice it like as like you knit with one color and you're supposed to do your increase and then I would knit the next color and then be heading back and then realize oh shoot I missed the darn increase again then I have to tink back with that color and then I tink back with both colors to where I need to fix it and then knit with the first and then knit with the second it's a little bit labor intensive but I feel like once you figure out how to fix it um it's totally doable I also learned how to pick up a dropped stitch in brioche. I went to the Loopy U for a knit night earlier this week and I came in and I said, does anybody know how to fix a drop stitch in brioche? And they all went, no. So um, I sat next to the super sweet girl that goes and we kind of looked at it and figured it out and picked it up and it wasn't an issue anymore. So that was exciting. So I'm learning a lot with this project, which I feel like the concept of being a part of the mystery and, um, the mystery for me is a big deal and the um, learning is why I'm doing it. Plus it's going to use up six skeins out of my stash, six skeins that I really loved and have for a reason, but I didn't know what to do with it. Like for a lot of them, I was like, oh, I don't really want to make just socks out of this, but what am I going to do with it in a shawl? And so I feel like this was a good use of all of that yarn. So there's that project. Um, and it takes up all of my time. I have been working a little bit on a pair of socks. This is more when I want to knit in weird places. And so I normally would probably be done with this by now, but I'm not. This is the sock blank socks that I started. So this is from Roundabout Yarn. And um, it's a sock blank. It's really pretty. It's called Fall Fetty. Turn the heel and I'm working on the toe right now. I worked on this last night while we were at a Scottish metal concert. We went to the Highlands Festival in Estes Park yesterday. We checked out the band Angry Brian's, which they were awesome. It was such a good concert and our kids were all with us and they were dancing with their ears covered. It was kind of like this. They would cover their ears and dance around. It was really cute. Um, cause they thoroughly enjoyed the music. It was like, you know, all this rock stuff. And then the bagpiper would come in and just go, it was like an electric guitar solo, but it was on the bagpipes. So that was the weird place I knit on that pair of socks this week. So not a lot got done on that. So other knitting that I have done, um, I have been working a lot on that ottoman for my friend and I decided to knit the sides instead of crochet. I ran out of, I figured out I was going to run out of yarn. I needed eight skeins to continue crocheting the sides and I only had six and they don't have any more at the store. So I didn't really want to wait around for them to get more or go up to a different city and have to find more of the yarn. So I went ahead and decided to just knit it. And um, so at this point I have three of these, well, two and a half, two and a half panels of the sides to yarn bomb the ottoman that I'm making for my friend. Um, this is just some yarn B super chunky yarn that I'm holding double and I'm knitting them with size 15 needles, I think is what it is. They're really big. Um, and it's super easy. I counted. It's just 26 stitches across and 45 or 44 rows up and then a bind off. So it's really easy. Um, it does hurt my hands a lot and I'm pretty sure I have some kind of a sensitivity to alpaca because if I'm not wearing heavy clothing like jeans and a sweatshirt or something, I itch the whole time that I'm working on it. Um, one time I worked on them in shorts because it was so hot outside and that was miserable. I turned all red and itchy and stuff. So 
Um, I hope to just kind of fly through getting those panels done and then I don't have to worry about it anymore. Um, and I think the top is going to be a lot of fun. So that is the other knitting that I'm working on. And my husband, oh, this is exciting. So I looked at my husband one day. We like to watch shows at night together. And I can easily watch three shows in a row because I have something to work on. I'm trying to get this, you know, just this one row done or just this one section done or things like that. And he doesn't really have anything that he can work on during the show. So he kind of just sits and we talk about the shows and things like that. But I was like, I want to teach you how to knit. I told him that one day and he said, why? And I just told him because then we can sit and enjoy shows a little bit longer together because I like doing that with you. It would be something for us to fun for us to do together. So we actually went to the Loopy U on his lunch break one day because he works really close. And we picked out yarn together and I bought him some needles. And I taught my husband how to knit this this last couple weeks. So um, I made this project bag. This is a Colorado Rockies bag inside in a Broncos bag on, or sorry, outside inside. Um, right now it's Rockies and Broncos season. But once Bronco season comes in, then we'll flip it inside out and it'll be a Bronco's bag. So, um, but we picked out some yarn. This is Malabrigo Rios, I think. Their worsted weight. In the colorway Azules Blues. And I taught my husband how to knit using the barley hat pattern. And so I asked him, do you want to start with a hat or socks? And he said a hat. Um, so we picked out some yarn that would match the jacket that he has, and he is doing such a good job. Look at this. He's done all this himself. I cast on his fur, I cast on his row because we tried having him cast on once before and it, the count ended up strained for some reason and we couldn't figure out why and stuff got twisted. So I just went ahead and did his cast on row for him. And then he did all the ribbing and then he switched the larger needles and he set up the panel all by himself. And now he's actually working on decreases. Look at this. Look how good he's doing. So he's doing an awesome job. Um, the decreases have been a little bit tricky for him. He's been learning a lot. And I mean, there's definitely a couple mistakes. We figured out that he knit twice once instead of doing garter. And then he, one time he purled twice instead of doing garter. So it all works itself out in the end, but look what a good job he's doing. I'm so proud. And I tell him that every day that I see him working. I'm like, I'm so proud of you. I will say that the Malabrigo is a bit splitty for it being his first project. Um, new knitters tend to knit kind of tight and he's not an exception to that. So we're working on tension and how to loosen his tension just a little bit. Um, and he's doing a great job. So that's our project that it's nice because we'll go turn on a show and he grabs his knitting or last night he was sitting outside the kid's room while they were falling asleep and he sat there knitting while he waited for them to fall asleep. It's kind of a dream boat. I'm not going to lie. I did finish two projects this week. I finished two spinning projects. I only have like five minutes so I have to go. So I'm going to combine the two into um, one little area. Um, this first skein is fiber from a yarn shop called The Hand Spinner Having Fun. This is in Scotland. I don't know what city, but my parents visited Scotland two years ago or one, no, one year ago, one summer ago. They went to Scotland for three weeks and my mom brought me back a ton of yarn and a ton of fiber. And so this was the last of the fiber that she brought me back. It's superwash merino or maybe just merino. I think it's just merino. Um, and this colorway is called Tempest. And um, it's, I just, it was a continuous fiber. So it had like whites and grays and a black stripe just running through all of it. And so I just spun it up really, really fine and then did a two ply and it turned out great. I have 576 yards of this. This stuff held so much water when I washed it. It was crazy. Cause I always wring it out and then, um, you know, put it in a towel and like, kind of beat out the water and I, I thwacked it pretty good. Um, and I hung it to dry and I always find that because wool has kind of water resistant properties that after probably about five hours, like the whole top of my yarn is dry and then all the water kind of pools on the bottom of the skein. And it was like soaking wet on the bottom. So I would like hold it over the shower and just squeeze it out and then let it dry some more and then squeeze it out. 
and the water was so dirty when I washed this stuff. I was really glad that I washed it because it was just gross. Um, but this spinny was enjoyable. Um, it took me a long time because it's just straight up gray. But I'm glad I'm done. So that was the last of the fiber that my mom brought home for me from Scotland. And I think I want this to be some kind of a lace shawl. That was why I chose to do a two-ply because I wanted it to be lace. And then this skein is my first fiber club into the world. The colorway is called Electric Bugaloo. I apologize, I said a different word. And I don't think it's a good word. I'm not sure, I actually haven't looked it up, but um, it's Electric Bugaloo. And this is a true three ply. Let me see if I can show it to you. This is a true three ply and the colors are perfect right now. Um, I spun it, I split it into really long skinny pieces all the way down the braid like some really skinny and some thicker and some thinner. I kind of wanted it to just be all over the place. And then I spun what I thought was about a third and about a third and about a third. And then I applied them all together. I ended up not um, doing a very good job of estimating weight. And so my bobbins ended up really uneven. And so I did have to redistribute on the bobbins, but it wasn't a big deal. I figured out how to do it pretty easily. So I redistributed on the bobbins and then I only had this much left. I usually have quite the mini skein left from um, leftover singles. So with a three ply, what I do is I spin until I get to a three ply and then I spin to a two ply and then I use the last ply by itself when the other two have run out and I just chain ply it into a striped yarn. And so this time I got to make a little mini skein. And I think this is my smallest leftovers mini skein. I want to say with only 20 yards. So that's pretty good. Um, that means that I'm getting better at this. And then I did get my, um, August club colorway in, and I have plans for that to make sure that the, that the bobbins are actually really distributed well. Um, so I am glad that I chose this type of spinning for this yarn because I watched the all day craftsy thing that they did on Labor Day. On Labor Day in the United States, they had a day where you could watch craftsy classes for free all day. And so I watched the um, spinning dyed fibers class by Felicia Lowe. And she talks a lot about the color wheel and what our eyes do when colors are kind of mixed together. And, um, and I wanted the pink to not be quite so bright. I wanted it to look really cohesive all the time. And I think had I not taken that class, or had I taken this class before I spun this yarn, I would have done exactly what I did. Um, so that shows me that I'm learning a lot more about the color theory and what exactly I want that yarn to look like. And it looks just exactly what I wanted it to be. This, um, I have two options with this. And again, I've been um, working really hard on documenting projects from start to finish. So I actually made a whole video all about the fiber when I got it and what it looked like when I got it and how I prepped it and spun it and that kind of stuff. Um, I wanted to kind of chronicle it from fiber to finish object for you. And I have a project that I can totally knit for my sister. Her birthday is coming up and she showed me a, a project that she was like, if you ever want to knit this for me, I would love it. And so I think I could totally knit that project out of this. At the same time, Rhineback is coming and I'm not sure that it would be wise to add another project onto this. And so um, onto my Rhineback timetable. And so I could, she's a crocheter, so I could just give her this yarn and she would be thrilled. This is totally her colors. Jewel tones are like her favorite colors. Um, and I think that she would love it. So I'm debating between just giving her the straight up yarn or knitting it into that product for her. Or she could crochet it into, she really likes crocodile stitch. She could make a really cool crocodile stitch something out of this and it would look awesome. So I still have to decide what to do with that. But that is the end of all of my projects this week. And I have to go pick up my son from school. So I hope you all have a lovely day. I will put some videos at the end, including some of the footage from the Highlands Festival yesterday. Um, we had such a good time. If I haven't mentioned it before, check out Angry Brian's because they're an awesome... Scottish band. And um, yeah, if you have any questions for me, again, Instagram is at butterfly m4, Ravelry as Emily Straw. They we do have a 
podcast group. I don't really do a lot in it right now, but you're always welcome to join and ask questions there. So I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you later. Bye. All right. So I'm going to show you how I am fixing a mistake that I made in my knitting. Um, when I'm knitting on my mesmeric cardigan. So I was looking at my work so far and I noticed that this white stitch right here is supposed to be turquoise and it's a really easy thing to fix um, when you do stuff like this without having to tink it back and I did it on every one of these diamonds so I'm gonna have to go through and fix every single one of these diamonds and I want it to look like like this one um, with that stitch being turquoise this is a really easy fix for um, fair isle knitting or stranded knitting and as long as you only have to do like one stitch switch and you don't mind tacking a couple things down behind when you're all done so it's not that difficult so it's not that difficult so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit over to where the stitch is that I need to fix so it's going to be actually I messed this up right here so let's go back and fix this Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit to the stitch that's above the stitch that I need to fix. So this one needs to be white. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this stitch down right here. And then I'm going to just kind of pull at it a little bit. You can take your crochet hook if you want just to kind of pull it. So this stitch right here, I don't want to be white. I want it to be turquoise. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the stitch below it right here and I'm going to just making sure that I grab the right one. I'm going to grab this turquoise float back here just like this. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to grab this turquoise float right here. I'm going to pull it through just like this. And then I needed two gray. Oop. It can be kind of tricky to not grab all your floats when you do this. Gray here. And one more gray stitch here. And then I'm just going to pop that on back onto my needle. And then I can knit and go on. So what you do then is you kind of just tug it and pull it a little bit and now you can't even see where I made the mistake. You can see where I made the mistake on the back so now there's this like big thread right here um, and you can go back and tack that down. I actually made the same mistake on the previous row and I had fixed it but I didn't realize I had made it for two rows so I'm just going to go through later and tack it down or maybe not. Um, palette is really nice. This is Knit Picks Palette. It's really good about it kind of felts itself. So if I wanted to just kind of felt it, like get this wet and just kind of rub it in back there, then it will stick. So I'll show you one more time. Let's go over to where the stitch is that I need to fix. Okay, so here we are again, and if if you're not quite sure which stitch you need to grab, you can always stick your crochet hook in too, just to kind of help you know which one you're supposed to be grabbing there. So you just kind of pull and tug until all the stitches come out. There we go. Grab this one right here, the turquoise one. And then I needed two grays. Pop that back onto my needle. And then keep knitting. 
and then just kind of pull and there you go so that's how I fixed that stitch um, maybe that's helpful for you talk to you later Thank you.